to your alveoli and they transpose. They transpose into your bloodstream. So whatever is on that particle, whatever heavy metal or organic pollutant is also part of that particle, now gets into your bloodstream and is capable of doing genetic alteration. About, uh, it'll be two years ago this May, so it was May of 2000, well, just past, 2006, 2007, I'm sorry, May of 2007 at the American Thoracic Society annual meetings in San Francisco there was a whole day of scientific papers on the effects of diesel exhaust on sperm development, breast cancer, diabetes. Now you'd say, well, what, diesel exhaust at the American Thoracic Society meeting, they should be talking about things like asthma, bronchitis. They weren't because the ultra-fine particles of diesel exhaust cross over into the bloodstream and have effects on male and female hormone-related tissues, so prostate, breast, ovary, testes, those are, the, those are high on the list, obviously, and also the pancreas, so diabetes is related. So don't kid yourself, air pollution is one of the ways that we are exposed to these invisible toxins. But the majority of invisible toxins and invisible killers that you're exposed to come through what you drink and what you eat. In the water supply, heavy metals from manufacturing, persistent organic chemicals, all of the things listed there, pesticides, gasoline, trihalomethanes, all from water treatment. All of these things get dumped into our water supply. Many of these things, many of these compounds are not biodegradable. They don't go away. They stay. DDT, great example. We use DDT in the United States. We stopped using it about 38 years ago. Haven't used it, haven't manufactured it in 38 years. The last manufacturing plant for DDT was in Torrance, California. That's right, not too far from where we live. And in Torrance, they used to dump all the effluent into the bay in San Pedro. So they've been monitoring the fish in the San Pedro basin, if you will, since they closed that plant down. And in 1960, and in 1982, and then in 2006, the amounts are exactly the same. And go to what? Persistent organic pollutant. The word persistent means it doesn't degrade. It sticks around. So whatever we made is around. And if it's in the fish, and the fish aren't eaten, and they die, and they're at sea, then it's in the seawater, and obviously those that eat those dead fish, it's in them, and eventually it will get into our food chain or into our fertilizer, and you say, how can that happen? And I would say to you that school children in Denver, Colorado in 2005 were tested, and you'll see later that as many as 40% of those kids had DDT in their blood. Where'd it come from? We're not eating vegetables that come from China. We're not. Some of it comes from the cloud that comes from, from the jet stream, but the rest is in our water supply. Obviously, in the foods we eat, heavy metals, pesticides, and hormones, C8 or PFOA from nonstick cookware. You know about that? Okay. Perfluorochemicals in nonstick. Here's the one thing that you have to remember. I can't remember whether it was DuPont or another company that when I was a kid used to say, better living through chemistry. Remember that? Yeah. Better living through chemistry. All of these products we're going to talk about. All of these invisible killers, all of these pollutants, initially were not developed to try and harm you. They were developed because you and I asked for them. You used an iron pot and you said, oh, I hate cleaning this thing. Can't somebody make a pot that I don't have to scrub so much? And they did. Okay? And, but they didn't know. Now they know. And they still make it. That's the genocide piece. And that's the part that disturbs me. And that's the part that I realized years ago. We have to inform audiences like this that you need to be empowered with this information because if you're waiting for your government, or if I'm waiting for my government, or the EPA, or the FDA, or the ABC, or the EFG to protect you, then you're waiting for Godot. Remember that? Great play. Anyway, 
C8 or PFOA from nonstick cookware, aluminum from cookware, and your underarm deodorant. You wanted a deodorant that didn't just, you know, the old joke about deodorants was, you know, they didn't stop you from sweating. They just made you smell okay, right? Okay. And so people wanted something that stopped them from sweating. Along came aluminum hydroxide. All right? Along came more Alzheimer's. So people forgot why they wanted that deodorant in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? I mean, it's it just, and it was okay with everybody. The FDA finds DDE over 50%. DDE is, by the way, the one breakdown product of DDT. Uh, many organic compounds are xenoestrogen. You know what a xenoestrogen is? It's a compound that's not estrogen. But it behaves like estrogen in that it attaches to breast tissue, particularly, and stimulates that breast tissue. Those are xenoestrogen, chemicals like an estrogen. We used to think, okay, I'll be in my house. You know, 